So today I'm going to make my anytime pie and um, what's great about this recipe is that it uses anything that you might have in the fridge that needs using up but it tastes delicious whatever you put in it. Um, so today I've got horseshoe gammon, four eggs, a medium onion that I've already peeled, I'm going to put some mozzarella in it, I also use red leicester or a really good mature cheddar and I've got some washed um, and de spinach in my saucepan. This is about half a bag of pre-washed spinach. So I'm going to put the spinach on initially just to wilt down because we need to cook the filling first so that it cools down and then I'm going to make the pastry for it. So I'm going to chop my medium onion That's a bit fierce. and you want a fairly fine dice on this onion the frying pan's going on to uh, warm while I'm chopping my onion I like to use a small knife for chopping, preparing knife. Don't have to be too precise with this. And as my pan warms, I'm going to put a little knob of lard in, about the size of a 50 pence piece. Um, I don't use olive oil because olive oil doesn't heat to the same sort of temperature. Um, I would normally use a vegetable oil, but I'm using lard because I'm using gammon as part of the filling. Um, and a little bit of lard in the, in the pan won't hurt because I'm going to drain the um, juice off before filling the pie. So this is to fry the vegetables down in. So to the pan, I'm adding my onions. And I'm not looking for a golden brown on the onions, I'm looking to sweat them down. So you want them to be translucent, but you don't want them to be browned. So while those are cooking, cooking down, give my spinach, add a little bit of water to the spinach, so it was washed, and this is going to go, no that won't take very long the spinach to cook down, so I'm going to turn the heat off on that so that it will continue to wilt, and while I'm waiting for the onions to cook I'm going to trim my horseshoe gammon Smoked gammon also works really well in this. This is actually an unsmoked gammon. You could also use pancetta, um, a really good quality bacon. You don't want anything with too much added water. So I am trimming the excess fat off the gammon. And then I'm rough dicing. So again, you don't need to be precise with this, but that's the sort of size that I'm looking for. My mum used to make this and I've made it for many years. It works really well with sausage, so you could make it a full breakfast pie, cherry tomatoes and sausage. Black pudding would work in this and mushrooms are really, really good. Not everybody's a fan of mushrooms. So by the time You've chopped your gammon up, the onions, give them a quick stir. The onions should be, onion should be great. You don't want the heat to be too low when you put the gammon in because you don't want you want the gammon to brown, not to boil, and too much in a pan will make meat boil. So that's chopped up nicely. And that's all going to be put 
put into the pan. So what we've got now, we've got nice gammon pieces and our onion. So to that, I'm going to add a good pinch of black pepper. I'm not putting salt in because we don't want the moisture to come out of the onions. I'll, I'll um, season with salt once the filling's cooked. But what I am going to do while we're waiting for the gammon to, to brown, is I'm going to break four eggs into my measuring jug. Very elegant, aren't they? And then I'm going to beat those up. So these are free range eggs. And I'm going to tip them into the cheese. And I'm going to mix the cheese and the eggs together. And I'm going to put that in the fridge for later once we've made the pie crust. So we're only looking to colour the gammon, we don't want to cook it through because it's going to be cooked when it goes in the oven and we don't want to overcook the meat. So now we've got our meat and our onion cooked down. I've taken it off the heat and I'm going to add to it the wilted spinach. Draining as much excess moisture out of the spinach as I possibly can. What I'm going to do with that is I'm now going to put it to one side to cool because you want the filling to be completely cool before you put it in your pie crust. I'm going to turn the heat off and put that to one side until the pie crust's ready. So now I'm going to make the pastry for my uh, pie crust. In my bowl I've already weighed out uh, eight ounces of um, plain flour. I'm sorry I'm still in old money. And I've got half fat to flour so I've got um, two ounces of butter, two ounces of of vegetable fat which I'm going to chop into my flour. I've also put into the flour about a teaspoon and a half of salt. And I'm going to work the butter and lard into the flour and I'm looking for the consistency of fine breadcrumbs, a bit like a crumble mixture. So short crust pastry is a bit of a prima donna. You do have to think about the gluten. So overworking short crust pastry can make it really tough. So you want to handle it as little as possible. And I've also put the water that I'm going to use as my binding liquid in the fridge so the butter and the vegetable fat were both cold and I've also put the water in the fridge as I've said so that the liquid is as cold as it can be when I bind the flour and the fat together. Short crust pastry really benefits from a cold environment. So 
So this is real time in some respects. I have made pastry earlier on because pastry is much better if you chill it. Once you've made it, before you make your pie crust, you want to be chilling the pastry down for half an hour or so before you roll it out. So this comes together fairly quickly. You do want to be quite light with it. Try and get some air into it. You don't want the, the fat to become a mush. You want to keep it of a breadcrumb consistency. So that's what we've got. So very quickly that's come together in my bowl. And I'll just get the water. So I'm going to be quite sparing with the water. I'm not going to, uh, I'm putting a little bit in at a time. I'm not putting too much in because I need, it does come together well, but what you don't want to do is you don't want to put too much liquid in it. So it's much better to see how it's binding and put it in a little bit at a time. This pastry that's got too much water in it, again, can go tough. So I'm using my knife to cut into the pastry to keep it the working of it quite light. But now I'm going to put my hands in because you don't need as much water as you think. It does come together fairly quickly, as I've mentioned. And I've not put anything any extra flavouring into this pastry so it is simply plain flour, salt, fat and water because the ingredients within the pie are going to be quite rich. And that's it, very quickly I've got a clean bowl, my pastries come together and I'm actually going to put that in the bowl in the fridge to chill because I've made one already. So this is pastry that I made about half an hour ago. I'm going to put some flour onto my board to stop it sticking when I'm rolling it out. So you don't want to put too much flour on the board because you don't want to change the consistency of the pastry. And I'm going to divide this pastry into two. So I want some for the lid and I want some for the pie crust base. So that's my base. I'm just going to get my rolling pin. A little bit of flour on the rolling pin to stop the pastry from sticking. You don't want to move the pastry around the board too much. So I normally make this pie on an oven proof plate. It works really well. So this pie eats really well hot or cold. It's great for a picnic or a lunch box as a snack or hot as part of a lunch or an evening meal. It does lend itself really well as a lunch dish. So again, you're looking not to move the pastry around too much as I've, as I've said, and I want about the depth of a pound coin when you're rolling out pastry. And it's a rough circle. I'm not being too precise. But what I've got, I've bought this fancy pie tin. Fancy, she said, it's not a plate. And then I'm going to use my rolling pin to transfer my pastry onto my pie dish. And I haven't messed around with this too much. The whole process was quite quick. So I didn't move it around too much on my pastry board. And that's what I've got. So that's chilled. By now my filling has gone cold. So I'm going to tip my spinach, gammon, onion mixture into my pie dish. I'm 
I'm going to pop that to one side for a moment before I put the eggs in because I'm going to roll out the lid of the pie. Quite a gentle touch on this pastry. You don't want to be uh, manhandling it too much. You don't want to be too heavy handed with it. You're trying to keep it nice, short pastry. So the least amount of handling is really good. Make sure it's not sticking to your board. Don't want to dry the pastry out with too much flour on it. This is going to be slightly larger, this disc, because you want it to completely cover the top of the pie, but you don't want the pastry to be too thick either. And I'm going to roll the pastry around my pin and move it to one side for a moment. And I've got my pie there. I've got my egg and cheese mixture out of the fridge. I'm also going to get a pastry brush. I'm going to use some of the water that I use for my pastry just to moisten the edge of my pie dish. Water, milk, egg will do this. I Water's fine for sealing the pastry together. And then I'm going to tip my cheese and egg mixture over the top of my gammon and spinach and just make sure that it's evenly distributed across the pie so that everybody gets an equal share of the filling and it's nicely distributed. And then to show you that that's what your pie looks like now. And then I'm going to lay my pastry top across the pie. Now I'm just gently going to press down around the edge. You notice I haven't trimmed the pie at this stage. Okay. So now I'm going to get a crimp, a knife, sorry. I'm going to crimp. I'm just going to seal the edges all the way around the pie. So we'll stop the ingredients from leaking. So now I've crimped the pie, I'm going to trim off any surplus pastry. So the pastry will shrink slightly, so I don't trim until the pastry's covered the, the lid. And that's my basic pie. I'm going to put two steam holes in the top there. And I'm actually not going to decorate that um, any more than the crimp. Um, I think that's, that's quite nice as it is. Um, that's your pie ready to go into a preheated oven about 170 degrees and uh, that will probably take 40 minutes, something like that, because most of the ingredients um, have been part, uh, part cooked. So it's just about making sure that the pie is cooked to a, a golden brown consistency. What I will do is I will milk wash that before it goes into the oven.
and this is the gorgeous finish pie. Lovely crispy crust. Cut it a little bit more, right through to the base. Super breakfast pie. Great for any meal. <laughs>